And here is a live look at Arlington National Cemetery where the president will lay the wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier in less than two hours. I want to bring back our powerhouse panel, policy analyst and Project 21 member Donna Jackson, political analyst Mark Halperin, and former Florida State House candidate and Marine Corps veteran Matt Tito. Good morning to you all. I want to start by talking about the tragic events down in Florida. Two people were killed, at least 20 others were injured after a shooting at a nightclub in Miami City. And this is a, a country, we've seen a rise in gun violence. Uh, here's the reaction from the police chief. My worry, and I think the worry of my colleagues across the country is that as we continue to talk about uh, mm -hmm. uh, defunding the police yeah. instead of, uh, f instead of uh, uh, making the police better and investing on good policing, uh, and then on the right, we're talking right. about, you know, more guns for chief. everybody, uh, it's gonna be a long summer. Now, Mark, you know, do we have a problem here? We've seen homicide rates spike all across this nation, state to state, city to city, in places where police have been defunded. Uh, we have those retention rates for existing police officers going uh, down, more police officers choosing to retire early. Uh, we have more difficulty recruiting new people to join the police force in an environment where law enforcement seems as if they've been cast aside, disrespected by society. How do we square this problem and fix this problem to bring the resources to an issue we desperately need to fix at a time when it looks like we're preparing to be uh, quite a dangerous summer? Joe, this is a big challenge for the country right now because the divisions are so stark. You have left and right, red and blue, with much different perceptions about how to solve this problem, how to address it, rather than the kind of consensus that would address both uh, the, the spate of gun violence as well as the need to make sure we have good policing in this country. There is a bill in Congress that's being negotiated. Let's see if they can get it out of uh, the negotiations into the president's desk, uh, despite all those divisions. Now, Matt, I'll come to you because it seems to me that there are lots of issues uh, that people seem to be missing the mark on. We've got a rise in violence on airlines. Southwest wants to blame the alcohol. We've got a rise of gun violence in the streets. People on the left want to blame the guns. Perhaps is there something else? Are these all just symptoms of the fact that people are tired of being marginalized and that rage that's been bubbling for so long um, has finally bubbled up to the surface and manifests itself um, across our great society? Yeah, I think it's a combination of all those things. And it's people that have been home for the past year and a half with the COVID lockdowns and you know, a lot of these people are coming out of their homes for the first time. And you even saw at the NBA game, game last night with the Brooklyn Nets, Kyrie Irving walking underneath the tunnel, getting a water bottle thrown in him. A couple of days before that, Russell Westbrook had popcorn poured all over him. And so you're seeing people acting out of character throughout the country. And, you know, you wonder if it's a combination of a lot of different things that, you know, the COVID lockdowns, you've got, uh, you know, the media just goes on and on and on. This racial divide, you've got the gun debate. You've got the debate over the border, and you've got all these different things converging into society. And a lot of people are having issues dealing with all these all these things. And so we need to get back to actually bringing unity back to the country, which is something Joe Biden and Kamala Harris continually talk about, but never actually do it. Now, Donna, we uh, the, perhaps the most striking thing about this tragedy in Florida is that we know so little about it thus far. There's a $125,000 reward out for the gunman. What do you believe uh, needs to be done here uh, to make sure that we can have respect for the law-abiding gun owners, sanctity of our Second Amendment rights, but also ensuring that whether we're talking about children in schools or people trying to enjoy a night out, that we can have that peace of mind that all Americans should be entitled to? You know, we, we, we have to um, increase the morale of the people that are charged with helping to defend us. Um, I have family members that are police officers. They did that because they were concerned about the community. Black Americans, they want more police, not less. The only people that want to defund the police are criminals because they're going to expand their enterprise. You know, it's important that we give everyone the resources that they need and not vilify anybody or blame someone based upon a, a symptom and not the real root causes. Second Amendment rights 
is black history because we know from civil right from the civil rights era all the way down to after you know uh, after the Civil War that the African Americans that had the largest survival rates were ones that owned guns. Everybody in my family is a gun owner. So I think that, you know, uh, trying to pinpoint one thing is not the answer. But what we need to do is not have this rhetoric where we marginalize people into being one, just a part of a group, instead of realizing that we are worth so much more than that. But right now, you know, the media has everyone thinking that everyone is their enemy. I feel like it's more racial divide today than when I was younger. And how can that be right. when it's been decades? So I, I think that we really need to get to a place where we stop this and, you know, they could have, the, the Biden administration, Democrats could have stopped this a long time ago, as soon as Obama and uh, Hillary Clinton started saying that it was okay to marginalize people, but they did it because they wanted political points. And now we're getting to this place where everybody thinks that any indivi every individual is their enemy. Every white man is a criminal for most black Americans now. How is that when we had abolitionists that helped African Americans in the right. Underground Railroad long before Harriet Tubman came along? So we need to rewrite history the way it really is and let people feel pride and feel good about who they are and who feel, to feel good about who their neighbors are. All right, we're gonna have to leave it there. Thank you always to our panel. It was a pleasure having you.